let's explore triangle similarity test. But prior to that, I just want to remind you what we already know from our study on congruent triangles a few modules ago. In order for triangles to be congruent, that means that they have to be the same exact shape and size, and all of the parts that correspond must be congruent. So notice that each of the three sides in this triangle has a corresponding side with which it is congruent, and I've marked two pair of angles congruent, and in any triangle, it's called the third angle theorem, if two angles in the triangle are congruent, then by default, since in both cases they have to add up to 180, and if these two measures are the same, then the third one would have to be the same. We know that all of the parts that match up are gonna be congruent if the two triangles are indeed congruent to one another. Our four triangle congruency test were side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. I would like to just point out that both of the, the last two tests both use two pair of angles um, when it comes to looking at a shortcut and determining whether triangles are congruent or not. So you would expect there to be triangle similarity test as well, and you would think that they would be kind of similar to this. So today we're gonna explore the first of three. So I tried to draw a pair of triangles that might be similar. Remember to be similar means that all of the angles within the two triangles are gonna have the same exact measure. And so like I just said, if these two are congruent, then we know by default that that remaining third pair of angles would have to be congruent. And I made this analogy earlier in the year when we were trying to, to see whether was angle, angle, angle a congruency test. And we decided it wasn't because if you have a triangle where all the angles are equal to one another. Well, remember, if you do 180 divided by those three equal angles, each one of these would end up being 60. And I could certainly draw a much larger triangle that had angles of 60. And remember, if these two angles are 60, since they add up to 180, this one has to be 60 by default. And that did not guarantee congruency, but it does guarantee that they have the same shape. Both of these are going to be equilateral triangles and all the sides are the same, so there's definitely a scale factor that would take you from this triangle to that one. Whatever you multiply this side by to produce this longer length is the same value that you would use to take you between this pair of sides and that pair of sides. So it turns out that in any two triangles, if just two of the angles are congruent to each other, two pair, since the third pair by default has to be congruent, this is our quickest similarity test, and therefore it is the one used most often, and it's called angle-angle similarity. That's going to guarantee that the triangles have the same shape, and therefore there will be some constant value that you could multiply by that would take you from any two pair of corresponding sides between the triangles going back and forth. So I want you to notice that this uses two angles, and this in and of itself kind of encompasses both of these tests. Both of these tests use two angles. So when it comes to similarity, we won't see those tests um, because this one handles that all by itself. And then in the next lesson, we will see that there is actually also a side, side, side and a side angle side similarity test. And those are the only three. So this one we will look at, these two, excuse me, we will look at in 8.4. And today in 8.3, we'll look at how you use angle-angle similarity. So 8.3 begins on page 91 in the workbook. And it's 
it's just saying that, you know, if we have similar triangles, all of the corresponding angles are congruent and all of the corresponding sides are proportional. So sides are proportional, angles are congruent when we have similar triangles. But just like with um, showing triangles congruent, we don't have to show that all of the criteria are met. There are shortcuts. And the first one we're looking at is angle angle. We'll look at how to use it. So here's the first example. We do have two triangles in this picture. The smaller one is nested inside. An angle L is an angle in the small triangle and it's also an angle in the large triangle. They share that angle so it has to be um, congruent in both triangles. How do we know that? Anything is congruent to itself by the reflexive property of congruence, looking at yourself in the mirror, and angle LPQ. So P is the vertex of this angle. Here's P. L is on one side of it, so this is one side, and Q is on the other. So LPQ is P is where they connect. This is the angle we're talking about right there. We know that LPQ is congruent to another angle in this picture because of the corresponding angles theorem. Well, remember, corresponding angles are two angles when a transversal crosses parallel lines. They're angles that are in the same position. So this one is in the lower right up here. It would be congruent to that one also in the lower right. So which angle is in the same position as this one? Here are the parallel lines. This is the transversal. I could extend those lines if that helps, but P is in the lower right position, and then so is this one. And that angle has J as its vertex with L on one side and P, sorry, K on the other. So I'm gonna call this angle LJK. It's congruent to LJK by the corresponding angles theorem, and then that's enough. Notice that we have the one pair of angles that they share and then the others. So um, sometimes if you have trouble seeing this, it takes a moment of your time, but it might help you to separate those nested triangles. So the larger one is LJK, the smaller one was LPQ. We said that L was the same in both triangles and P was congruent to J. So by angle angle, we know the third angle has to be congruent and all congruent angles is gonna guarantee the same shape, so they're congruent. So let's try it on our own. Uh, what do we think? Are these two triangles congruent to one another? Well, I can see that they have one pair of angles congruent. I know that angle C is congruent to angle D because those are both right angles, but those certainly are not congruent, are they? However, we can find the measure of A. I know since this is 90 degrees all by itself that these two angles need to add up to 90 together. So 44 and 46 would equal 90. And same thing over here, 47 and 43 would equal 90. So in order for the triangles to be similar to one another, I needed another pair of angles, but I don't have another pair of congruent angles. So no, they are not similar to one another. All right, we're going to work the odds one through nine, and then we'll hit some of the other ones together in class. So right now, the only test we have for similarity is angle angle. So that's what we're looking for every time. Do we have two pair of angles that are congruent in the two triangles. Determine whether the triangles are similar. We're gonna practice writing the similarity statement as well. So here are my two triangles. I can see that F and J are congruent to each other and nothing else is marked, but we know that vertical angles are always congruent. The two angles across from one another when um, triangles intersect. So they are similar, yes, by angle, angle, similarity, and let's name them. So if I call the triangle on the left FGH, I went from the single marked angle to the unmarked to the double, I need to name this one the same way. So the single marked angle to the unmarked to the double H, those are similar. 
Okay, what about number three? They look similar. In fact, they almost look congruent to me. I do know that those angles are congruent, but there's nothing else that I know for sure. I don't have any parallel lines marked or anything. So no, there's not, a, there's not enough information to say for sure there. Do we have similar triangles in this case? Well, we can see that we have congruent angles with the 41 degree angles, but once again, we're missing the third angle in both of these triangles. Um, 41 and 87 is 128. If you subtract that from 180, that's gonna leave you with 52. And 52 and 41 is 93. And if you subtract that from 180, that's gonna leave you with 87. So sure enough, I've got another pair of congruent angles. So we're gonna be able to say yes by angle, angle similarity. And I can't name those triangles because I haven't been given vertices for them. All right, so how do we use this? And the fact that we learned how to solve proportions, we've been working on those for a few days to solve problems. So we have a cell phone tower and it casts a shadow that's 100 feet long. At the same time, a person, Leah, is standing near the tower. So she's in the same location and she's casting a shadow that's three feet, four inches long. If she is four feet, six inches tall, how tall is the cell phone tower? Okay, all right, so let's draw a picture. So here's the cell phone tower, that's what I'm looking for, that's X, and it's casting a shadow that is 100 feet long. At the same time, we have a person standing, clearly she's gonna be shorter than the tower. Um, four feet, six inches tall. I'm trying to decide um, if we should put this in inches or feet. I actually can, as long as I'm working with Leah, I can put everything in inches. I'll, sh I'll show you how this works. I'll do it both ways really quickly. So three feet, that's 36 inches, and four inches is gonna be 40 inches. That's her shadow. Her shadow is 40 inches long. She's four feet, six inches. Four times 12, 48 inches plus six. She's 54 inches tall. Okay, so I wanna set up my proportion. Here's my right angle. And the fact that the sun is shining and casting a shadow, we call this an incoming angle. The sun's rays are hitting that tower at an angle and her top of her head at the same angle. The incoming angle is the same. That's why they said that she was standing there at the same time. So you'll always have similar triangles. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do actual heights over shadow heights when I set up my proportion. And as long as I'm consistent, I'm good to go. So look, this is why this is going to work. I'm looking for the actual height in feet the shadow is also in feet. So within this ratio, I've done feet over feet. In this ratio, the actual height is 54, and yes, it's inches, but so is my denominator, inches and inches. So that's gonna be okay in that case. You have to be consistent this way. So these are both actual heights and this way, feet to feet, inches to inches. I'll do it the other way where I convert this to feet as well and you'll see that we get the same answer. So when I take cross products, I have 40X is equal to 5,400. Divide both sides by 40. Uh, one second, I need... Sorry about that. Okay, so when I divide by 40, I'm gonna lose a zero. I didn't bring a calculator home, so I'm just gonna do 540 divided by four. And you get 135, okay? Now just stop and think about what that is. Um, I already set it up in order for that to be feet over feet. So the tower is 135 feet long. That makes sense because the actual height is more than the shadow and her actual height was more than the shadow. 
Um, just quickly, if I had done this the other way along, around, four inches, if I wanna change it to feet, would be four over 12 or one third of a foot. So um, the height of the tower over the shadow of the tower, both in feet, I want to do the height, the actual height of the girl, and we know that six inches, six inches, six over 12 is half a foot. So she is four and a half feet tall, and this is three and one third inches, I'm sorry, feet long. I'm going to change both of those to improper fractions as I plug them in. So her actual height, four times two plus one, is nine halves feet. And then the actual length of her shadow, three times three plus one is 10 thirds. Take cross products and you're gonna get that 10 thirds times X is equal to, that's gonna be 900 over two, 900 over two. Um, that'll be 10 thirds X is equal to 450. And then in order to get rid of the 10 thirds, I can multiply by the reciprocal, multiply both sides by 3 tenths. If we do that, these cancel out, and we get that x is equal to, x equals 10 goes into 450 45 times, and 45 times 3 is still 135. So either way you do it, though this was much easier, correct? We didn't have to do the conversions. You get 135 feet. All right, let's just look at nine and we'll be finished. So identify the similar triangles and then find each measure. So we have a pair of angles congruent and a pair of angles congruent. So I'm gonna write a similarity statement. I'm gonna call the top triangle ABC and it is similar to, so A was my unmarked angle, B was the right angle, C was the marked angle. So I'm gonna do unmarked D, marked B, single E. That's my similarity statement, and that will help me set up my proportion. So what are we trying to find? We wanna find the value of AC, and I'm going to have to know X to do that. So I need to set up um, a proportion using known values. So I'm gonna call this triangle one and triangle two. And when I set up these proportions, I'm gonna do, when I set up the ratios to make the proportion, I'm gonna do values from triangle one over corresponding values from triangle two. So triangle one is this one. I'm gonna start with what I know, which is the 12. 12 is side BC, BC matches up with BE using the statement that I wrote. BE is 15. Now I'm gonna go back to triangle one and I need to bring in this binomial so I can solve for X and that is side AC. A and C are the first and last letters. That's definitely gonna match up with DE, which will be X plus five. Now we'll take our cross products to solve. So on this diagonal, we have 12 times the quantity. You have to multiply it through times the binomial and 15 times the quantity. We'll distribute through on both sides. So 12X plus 12 times five, 60, equals 15X plus 15 times one, 15. Let's get our X's together. So I'll subtract 12X. So we get that 60 is equal to 3x plus 15. Subtract 15 from both sides, and we have that 45 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to 15. But we want to find AC, and AC is equal to x plus 1. So 15 plus 1 gives us 16 for AC.